Hello everyone. I'm Vignesh from Zoho Creator Solutions, and I welcome you all to this webinar, which focuses on usage of Deluge in Zoho Creator. Zoho Creator is a powerful and intuitive platform that empowers you to turn your ideas into reality. With Creator, you don't need to be a coding expert to build custom applications that cater your specific needs. The sweetest thing about Creator is it is for everyone. Now let's dive into the world of Creator and unlock the power of customization through Deluge. Before we get started, I'd like to inform you a few points. All attendees attending this webinar will be on mute. We request you to ask your questions in the questions panel of your Zoho backstage. A complete recording of this session will be sent to all the attendees. And we request you to participate in the post session survey as your feedback is always important to us. So without further ado, let's get into the agenda of today's session. First, we look into Deluge and how, what it is and how we use it in Creator. Then the advantages of the using Deluge in Creator. And then workflows and more Deluge tasks that we use predominantly in Zoho Creator. And then um, demos of those important Deluge tasks. Deluge is an integral part of Zoho Creator, which gives us the ability to power, to power up our apps that are built in it. Deluge just not only helps us in Zoho Creator, it can also be used in most of the other Zoho services as well. As we all know, Zoho Creator is a local platform on which we build custom applications. The point to be highlighted here is, it is a low code platform and never a no code platform. Though we would be able to create a basic application without a single line of code, it would not be a fact to limit you all when you know the code. Just like how Zoho Creator is being used by small businesses to large enterprises, it is also for the people who do not have much experience in coding to a highly skilled programmer. Deluge. Deluge is a very simple yet a powerful scripting language. It's time for a quick trivia now. Data enriched language for universal grid environment is the abbreviation for Deluge. When I said Deluge is a scripting language, I meant it. Unlike programming languages, Deluge is used to create scripts or bits of code. In a scripting language like Deluge, we simply write the script for the action that we want to achieve. Deluge will help us to automate tasks, manipulate data, and importantly, we add complex business logics to applications using it. Deluge in Zoho Creator. By using Deluge, we can transform a normal app built in Zoho Creator to an advanced automated application. By adding Deluge to our Zoho Creator apps, we unlock a whole new functionality and automation. As I had mentioned earlier, most Zoho services use Deluge in them. So we can integrate the Zoho Creator app with any other Zoho service. Not only Zoho services, through API, we can integrate with any third-party software. For this session's use case, we are taking CEX, Complete Entertainment Exchange, as our use case. CEX is a leading games and tech buy and sell specialist. We can buy, we can buy sell, exchange gadgets here. So let's see how Zoho Creator can help the store in automating their routines. Workflows. I have told you a lot about Deluge, but all of it comes to use only when we create workflows. Workflows are set of actions that execute at specific instances. Workflows trigger executes all the actions associated to it in a sequential order. All these will make more sense to you in the upcoming slides where I will be explaining each type of workflow in detail. Types of workflows. Form workflow, schedule workflow, approval workflow, payment workflow, blueprint, and functions. These are the different types of workflows available in Zoho Creator. First, let's look in detail about form workflows. Form workflows are workflows that are triggered when there is an action involved in the form itself. For creating a form workflow, we will have to choose two different events based on which the workflow should be triggered. The two events are record event and form event. There are different record events and form events. For example, you need to choose the event, the records event, that is whether the workflow has to be triggered while creating the workflow, while creating the record or editing the record or while deleting the record or even while both creating or editing the record. And then form events, that is the action that happens while adding the record. If I choose the record event as created, and then I'll have to choose a form event as well. So I need to choose whether the workflow has to be triggered 
when the when the form is on load itself or whether when i input a value in a specific field in the form or before submitting the form or after su submitting the form they are validation and successful submission schedule workflows schedule workflows can be triggered based on a predefined time that time can either be a specified value or it can even be a date time value stored in a date field or time date or date time field in the app itself approval workflow approval workflow enables the users to approve or reject a submitted record which in our case as a as a technology gadgets ex exchange store we treat it as a request so we can also configure actions that need to be triggered when the request is approved or even cancelled so approvals can be done in multiple levels like uh, like a hierarchical order in an organization payment workflow a payment workflow comes to use when we need to collect payments from the from the users who use our app we can also create custom actions that needs to be triggered when the payment succeeds or a different action when the payment fails to create a payment workflow we have to establish a connection with the payment gateway through which the users will be paying some of the famous payment gateways that zo operator support are listed in this slide for example paypal raise or pay on paytm blueprints using the, the new blueprints builder you can visualize and design every detail of your business flow and focus on the critical needs of your organization using blueprints you can create an online replica of your exact business process and streamline it perfectly the blueprints basically has two components in it they are stages and transitions stages are like the current status of the process that is happening in the business and transition is what moves the process from one stage to another that is for every transition that that happens from one stage to another we will be able to configure a custom action that has to be triggered for example let's take the, the the delivery process of an order so here when i transition the stage stage of the the order from confirmed to packed we can choose to send an email to the customer when the stage is transition from confirmed to packed we can choose to send an email to the customer that their that their order is packed and it will be ready to ship so deluge tasks so first let's look into data types that are available in deluge Data types refer to the categories of data that can be stored and manipulated by Deluge. Some of the different data types that are available in Deluge are text, integers, decimal, date, time, and more. Let's see how this data type affect us while using Deluge. Here, let me show you how we will be declaring a variable in Deluge and how data type is being assigned to the variable that we create. So, for example, let me create a variable named A. and let me assign a value zoho to it so here we are assigning a text value so its data type will be analyzed automatically and be considered as string and then i'm i'm declaring another variable b which is equal to creator both these variables are of string data type so let me say so let us see how arithmetic operations also work in deluge so now let me view the let me view let us view the result of adding a variable a with variable b variable b so this info is a statement that we used to debug our code in deluge using this we will be able to view the responses or the data that we, that, that are stored in different variables so let me execute this script and now we see that the the two variables are added and now the response that we get is zoho creator as a whole now let's look into conditional statements conditional statements are used in deluge to make decisions based on whether a certain condition is true or false we have provided the syntax in the slide we can have a look on it also we have detailed help documents for each of these deluge tasks this is the document for conditional statements where we have been, we have specified the different type where we have mentioned different types of conditional statements available in deluge and syntax for each of them syntax and even examples for each type of them we will be sharing the 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 links for these help documents in our chat as well 
send mail the send mail task is used to send emails to the specified recipients it is as simple as it is so you can you can also view the view it syntax from here now it's iteration iteration is the repetition of a set of code in deluge until a specific condition is met in deluge it is a commonly used list list or fetched records for iterating this is a simple example for iteration so now let's see how these three tasks will be helpful while building an application this is our application for the business cex let me also give a brief intro about this application this is the order form through which uh, the 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 users the users will be able to place and place the order for the customers and this is the product form through which we will be adding products to the store and this the customer details form and an announcement form to make announcements to our customers first let's look on how condition how conditional statements are used in deluge for example we have a, we have a form to order products so let's see uh, let's take an example of a customer ordering purchasing things from a store and now uh, we are selecting the name of the customer and the product that they are going to purchase for example let's let's have a case that the the minimum order value for a, for an order must be more than 1000 rupees so let's see what happens when a customer tries to order tries to make an order which has an order value of of price less than 1000 so let's take let's for example if we say that the customer is purchasing this table which costs around 300 and they are purchasing two of them so now the price is 600 for our business we, the, the the customer should not be able to uh, make this order so for that let's use conditional statements and prevent the customer from placing this order the the form in which we are we are create for which we are creating this workflow is by products so let's go to that pro that form by products and the action we need to create create this workflow is on validations of submission so so this action checks the triggers the workflow right before submitting the record so we can check the values and cancel cancel the submission if it is not satisfied so let's let's click on validations of home submission and we can see that we have a workflow to check the minimum order value so this workflow basically does it has a, a simple if condition the condition the criteria here is the the value that is entered in the grand total field which we refer as input dot grand total has to be is is less than 1000 1000 so if the uh, the the grand total value is less than 1000 we are alerting the customer that the, we are alerting the customer that the minimum value must be 1000 and also we are cancelling the submission let's see how this works now the grand the grand total value is 600 and i am clicking on buy so yes now we get the alert that the minimum value for the order must be 1000 and we can also see that the form is not submitted now let's see an other example where we are using making use of both iteration and send send email so as i had told you earlier this is the announcement form through which we will be making announcements to our customers for example let's take a case that we are going to announce few customers that we are we are we are going on a sale in our store so the setup of the form is it has a lookup field from the customer details form in this form is where we are storing the all the details of the customers this is the report of that form and in our announcement field, announcement form we are having a multi select lookup based on this form so we will be able to see all the customers names so here the the flow is that we will be choosing the the name of the, the the name of the customers for whom we need to send the email here i have selected five customer names and then i am typing the 
I am selecting the type of the announcement that has to be made. So the the, the announcement that we are going to make is about offers that we are, that offers are, offers are going on in our store. So when I when I click on submit, we we should be sending emails separately to all these customers that we are, that the about the offer that is going on. So let's see how we are going to achieve it. Here, the the name of the form is announcement, and and this workflow has to be triggered after submitting the form. So the workflow is configured on successful submission of the form. And this is the action for it. And this is the Deloitte script for it. First, we are iterating through each of the names entered in the customer names lookup field. These are the names. So we are iterating through each one of these names. And now, and then we are assigning the, the email content in in the three different variables for the for three for the three different kind of announcement types that we will be making we have created three variables and assigning the content that we will be sending so after after assigning the the email content in these three variables we are checking the type of announcement type the we are checking the announcement type that is selected in the form so first we are checking whether the announcement type is shop closed and if if it is if the announcement type is shop, shop, shop closed, we are we are we are passing the variable that is the email content as uh, with the with this with with the, with the with the with the data that 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 is stored in the closed variable. So mail content will be equal to closed. In in our case, it is offers. So this condition won't be satisfied and it will be coming to the next condition. That is, else if the announcement type is offers equal to offers, then the mail con content will be chosen as offers. So the mail, and then once we choose the, the type of uh, announcement that we need, that we're going to make, uh, we then and then we, we can finally send the email to the customers. So here we have the send mail deluge task. The way we will be specifying the email address from which the from which the email has to be sent, and then to the to the to the to the, and then the two address to which the email has to be sent, which in case which in this case will be customers email address, which we which we have from the customer names customer details form, and then the subject for this. Email will be input dot announcement type, which is the which is what we select here. So for this, it will be as offers, and then the mail content, which we also which also we have decided here. So let's see how this is going to work. Let me submit this form. I have submitted this form successfully, and now let me wait for the email. We can wait for a few seconds. Yes, I have received the email. Please allow me a moment to, to, to drag the kit to the to the current screen. Yes. So this is the email which I received now, which is on 17th May 9:22 p.m. That we are going, we are providing 40% offer on all our products in the store. So we can confirm that this workflow is working successfully. So now let's look into the other Deluxe tasks. Fetch records. This is an important, important task in Deluxe, which we will be using very often during our app development phase. Fetch records task is used to retrieve data from a form based on the provided criteria. Let me show you the help document for, Del for the Fetch records Deluxe task. So here we can see the syntax for using the fetch record service task. This is the first, we, we declare a collection variable. We can name it anything, we can name it anything. And then we are specifying the form link name. That is the form link name from which we need to fetch the records. And then the criteria based on which the, the records has to be fetched. Also, we can also uh, specify and sort the the records, the data that we fetch based on any field link, based on any field that is present in the records that we are fetching. Similarly, we can also set a range that 
you can set a range based on this the record uh, the records has to be fetched let me show you an example of how we this will be working in our application so as you see as you see already this this by products form has a lookup name as a lookup field from the customers from the customer details form which is this so on selecting uh, the name of a customer we need to auto populate the contact number and the customer email as we have these details stored in our application already under this report so here for each customer name we have their contact number and email stored so let's see how we are going to achieve this through deluge the now the name of the form is customer deed the form is by products and the workflow and the action on which this workflow has to be triggered is on user input of this customer name lookup field so let's filter it there on user input of a field once i select this we'll be able to see all the workflows that trigger on user input of a field in this by products form um, our need is user input of the customer name field which is here populate customer details let's see the deluge script for it so this is the deluge script to fetch and auto populate details yes it looks that simple so let me let me show you by recreating it first we can drag and drop the fetch records that is task from the left panel so once we drop it we can enter a name for our for the very for the variable in which our, our fetched records are going to be stored so in this case let me name it as fit be anything and now we are going to specify the form name from which we are going to fetch the form name is customer details and then the criteria based on which the data has to be fetched since we are using a lookup field the data the data will be mapped through the unique id of each record so we are going to we are going to select the id field the id of a record in the customer we are fetching the record which has the same id as we select in the in this customer name lookup field as, or, as well so so we, we will be able, we can see that we have the customer names as the values as the values here but these are only display values in the back end they will be stored based on the unique id for each of them so let me specify it as id equal to equal to the value that i choose in the customer customer name lookup field that is input dot customer name you can also see that it is the data type for this lookup field is mentioned as integer because only id id values will be stored in the lookup field so here we are successfully fetching the record and storing it in fetch variable in this variable fit and then i am going to pass the values that we have fetched to the uh, customer's contact number on the email field so let me choose the field to which i need to pass the values first is input dot contact number so input dot contact number is the field that we have in the current form which is by products so input dot contact number equal to fit dot contact number fit is the fetched collection variable and the contact number is the the value stored in the contact number field in customer details form so contact number similarly we are passing the value for the email field as well input dot customer email equal to fit dot email We save the script. Yeah, it saved successfully. And let's see how this is going to work in our live mode. So now, when I select a customer name here, the contact number and the email has to be populated automatically. So let me select John, and we see that the contact number and the email are auto are auto populated. Similarly, the fetch records task is also used on user input of this product name lookup field. So when we choose a, a product, we can see that their 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 the category type and the and price are are populated automatically. So let me choose a 
this product and we see that it's 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 category type and price are pop populated automatically this is also achieved using the fetch records search task insert sub form rows this task is is used to dynamically insert sub form rows through deluge this is the syntax for the for using the deluge task let me also show you the help document for it insert rows in sub form all these as as i said all these uh, all these help documents links will be shared in the in our chat so this is the syntax for the help doc for the insert rows sub form insert sub form rows deluge task first we will have to declare a row uh, for the for the for the sub form to which we are going to insert rows so we will specify the link name of the form and then specify the link name of the sub form this is the syntax to create a row for a sub form after creating a row we pass the values that we need to insert in the sub form so i i select i i select row 1 the this the row 1 dot the field link name that is the the fields that are available in that sub form i will be choosing i will be choosing that field and then the value that i need to pass to that field similarly i am creating another row and passing values to that row as well and then i am adding these two rows into a collection and i finally insert this collection of rows into the sub form to which we are to, be, to to which we need to insert the rows let us see an example of it in our application itself so let me explain you about the two different types of products that we sell in this store so these are products that are sold separately and we also have another thing named bundles so these bundles have a, a collection of items within them so each bundle has few components in it so when let's say a customer is going to order a bundle our 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 buy products form will will be behaving as slightly different in the case of ordering a bundle so let's take an example where the customer is ordering a ps4 bundle so ps4 bundle has three components in it which are listed here and it has a selling price here let's see how a customer will be having will be viewing the form when they are ordering a bundle let me select the name of the customer and then i am going to choose that order bundle checkbox once i choose it the we, we see that a different set of fields are appeared in the form and now we will have to choose the bundle that we are going to order so as i said it is now it is ps4 bundle so ideally when i select ps4 bundle i need those those three components that this that the bundle contains to be populated as three different rows in this sub form so that the customer will have a, a brief view of what they are going to purchase let's see on how we are going to create a deluxe uh, 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 workflow to achieve this the workflow is in the same form by products but it is going to be on user input of a different field that is bundle name on selecting a bundle name we are going to we are going to insert the rows as the we are going to insert the components insert the components that the bundle has as rows in this bundle details sub form so oh, it is on user input of bundle name yes this workflow so we see that so this is how it works first we are declaring a collection first we are declaring a collection to which we will be adding the rows that we create so we have declared a collection here and then we are fetching the record from which we need to get the data for inserting the sub form rows here it is from the we are fetching from the add product form because this add product form will be have has the details of the bundles which is stored here so from this add product form we will be fetching these details the contents of the selected bundle name so that is if the customer is choosing to order the ps4 bundle if, the, if they choose the ps4 bundle the contents these three these three items has to be inserted as three different rows in the buy products form so we will have we will be fetching those details here once we fetch it 
as it is a lookup field the, the criteria for this is going to be the same as we saw in the uh, demo of our fetch records task it is going to be based on the id and then once we fetch the record we are we are going to iterate through the row through the rows of the sub form it has that is that product form also has a sub form in which we will be adding the components for each bundle so this bundle has three components in it so we will be iterating through through those three three items and we will be so for that we are creating a row here by specifying the name of the sub form to which we are going to, the name of the form and the sub form so in this case we are inserting records to the form to the sub form in by products in this by products form and then the name of the the sub form is bundle details so here we are, we have created the row once we have created the row we are specifying the name of the field in the sub form and then we are passing the value which we have fetched similarly we are specifying the name of another field in the sub form and passing the value another value which we have fetched earlier once we once we pass values to the row that we created we are inserting that row to the main collection which we created in the first line of our code so so by the end by the, by the end of the iteration of these three items we will have those three rows inserted in this collection rows so so now that we have three rows in this collection it is they are ready to be inserted to the sub form here to the sub form here which is bundle details so we we are we are we are, we are, we are entering input dot bundle details which is the link name of this sub form input dot bundle details dot insert the rows the collection of rows which is rows here we are insert we, are, we have inserted the rows and then we are also auto populating the selling price of the bundle so we are we are we are passing the selling price of that field of that of that bundle to the grand grand total field which we have in the end of our form so let us see how this works the the bundle that we are going to purchase is ps4 bundle so yes you can see that those three those, those three components are added as three different rows in the bundle details sub form now the user will be able to have a glance on what they are purchasing and also the grand total uh, is auto populated create record in zoho crm as i said earlier using using deluge we will also be able to insert, integrate will be able to integrate with uh, other zoho services so let's see an example where we are we are going to create a record in our zoho crm this is the syntax for the for the integration task of zoho crm which is for creating a record in it let's go to a application so this this customer details in details form is where we are going to use the create records deluxe task based on zoho crm so here we will be adding the details of our customers now i i want to add the details which i add here to our zoho crm as well by as a contact so when i when i submit a submit this form with the details of a customer i need this exact details to be to be created as a contact module contact module in my zoho crm so let's see how this is going to work the form for this for this example is customer details and the action on which you are going to create this workflow is on successful submission of the form so once we successfully submit the form we are going to insert that data to our zoho crm to insert the data in zoho crm we need the data collected in our deluge so we are declaring a map in the first line as contact info which is the map which is going to create which is going to contain the details of the of the of the record which is going to be created in zoho crm first we are entering the we are entering the last name for the contact that we are creating in crm and similarly the phone and email details and then we also create an another map in which we can pass optional optional values now we are using the now and now we finally use the the create record task for zoho crm which is uh, first we we we, are, we create a variable named response and then we are using the integration task here we are specifying 
we can see the syntax here and relate it with the uh, with, with line six. So here we are specifying the module name to which the record has to be inserted. So in this example, we are inserting a new contact module, a new a new record in contact module, and then the details of the record that has that is that has to be created, which is the contact info map here where we have already pa already passed the details, and then an optional map. And then the uh, on the map and uh, the options map in which we'll be passing the optional parameters, and then finally a connection between Zoho Creator and Zoho CRM. This connection CRM all is what we have already created from the microservices section of our Zoho Creator dashboard. We can create con connections from that section. So let me update it and refresh that page. So let us add a customer in a customer details form. The name of the customer is going to be Rickshaw. And the contact name and the contact number is and their email. So I'm submitting the recording now, so create a form. So now we should be able to see that details. So we see those details in our Zoho CRM. Let me roll. Yes, here we can see that the, the, the contact is, is also added in our Zoho CRM. So this is how integration tasks of Deluge work. Integration tasks of Deluge are available for not only CRM, it is available for many other Zoho services. You can check it from the from the from the link we post in the chat. Functions. Functions are generally a reusable set of code that performs a specific task. Functions can find it can intake input parameters and return output values. They can be used in any application created within the Zoho Creator account. Now, this is the syntax to call a function which we have created already. Now let's see a, a demo where we are going to use functions in our application. Deluge also has a lot of built-in functions created in it. So they are, they will be useful in in making in different calculations which which we which we will which, which will be finding useful while creating our application. Let me also show that these are the the different built-in functions that are available in Deluge. So let us have a look on date time functions that are already available. So here we have these different types of functions to make specific calculations. For example, this get day deluge function gets the day value of from the from, from the date time value that we have in our application. For example, here the the date value is 8 January 2019. By using this current date built-in function, we will be, we'll be able to get the date the day value separately, that is 8. Here we can see that it returns 8. These are built-in functions. Let us see how we are going to create a custom. Let's see how custom functions are created in Zoho Creator. You click on create a new function and name the function as let me also let you let me also tell you the use case for this function. So here. Um, now we are going to create a custom function to calculate the power of a given number. So here we have a field named power of and then another field result. When I when I enter a number in this power of field, we will we, we should be able to get the get the power value of the enter number populated in the result field. Let's create a deluge deluge work deluge function for that. The function name is going to be calc power.
and the language which we are going to create this function is deluge but jo creator also supports creating custom functions in node js and java as well and the namespace in which we are going to create, uh, store this function is going to be default and the type of value this function will be returning is going to be integer as the power value of a number will, will also be a number will also be of integer type and then the argument which we will be passing in this to this function is also going to be of integer type now we are creating this function so the function is created now and we can start entering our custom code so let us create a deluge variable as power and let me specify the formula to 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 calculate the power of a number which is then the the entire number multiplied by itself multiplied with itself so in this case the entire number will be passed as an argument to this value po pow so let me make this pow multiplied with pow itself and then we are going to return the the value that we get after after this formula is applied so we are returning the power value let me save this script and then you can see that the 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 function calculate power val is created now we have to we have to call this function on user input of this field power of the form is functions and let me create a new workflow the form is functions the and then the form event is going to be on user input of a field the field is power of the workflow is to calculate power now we are going to we are going to pass the value returned by the function to the result field so input dot result is equal to the function that we have created so let us this is the syntax to call a function and now let's use this this app dot calculate power value this is the function and then we are specifying the argument that we need to pass and this is going to be the value that we entered in the field power of input dot power of let's save the script and let's see how it works in the live mode of the application power of so let us calculate the power of number 6 Yes, we get the result as thirty-six, which is the power of six. Now let's see another example where we are going to use built-in functions of deluge. Here we have two dif two different date fields that are that is from from date and to date. So here, when I this 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 example is to calculate the the number of days in between two selected. two given date values so let's let's see how we are going to achieve this using the built in functions of deluge the the form in which we need to work date this work this workflow is on use uh, is functions and the workflow has to be triggered on use and put of the two date two date field because this is where the user enters the date finally and let's see the workflow for it yes here we see that we have another field days between and so we are passing the value that we get by calling the function days between days between is also a built in deluge function days between this is how days between function work built in function work so we spe we specify the the from date and to date 
and we automatically get the days between it as the return return value here the return value will be stored in the field days between so let's see how this works for example the day i am going to choose as from is 2nd of may and the to date is going to be 12th of may we can see that the days between these two given dates are 10 which is correct by this we come to the end of our webinar so now we are open to questions i request you all to share your feedback for this session i thank you all for joining this session and you all can try Soho Creator for free from our website. We'll be open for a few more minutes and the webinar will be ending.